chapter 35. Josiah celebrated the Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem, and the Passover lamb was slaughtered on the 14th day of the first month. He appointed the priests to their duties and encouraged them in the service of the Lord's temple. He said to the Levites, who instructed all Israel and who had been consecrated to the Lord, Put the sacred ark in the temple that Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, built. It is not to be carried about on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves by families in your divisions according to the directions written by David, king of Israel, and by his son Solomon. Stand in the holy place with a group of Levites for each subdivision of the families of your fellow countrymen, the lay people. Slaughter the Passover lambs, consecrate yourselves, and prepare the lambs for your fellow countrymen, doing what the Lord commanded through Moses. Josiah provided for all the lay people who were there a total of 30,000 sheep and goats for the Passover offerings, and also 3,000 cattle, all from the king's own possessions. His officials also contributed voluntarily to the people and the priests and Levites. Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, the administrators of God's temple, gave the priests 2,600 Passover offerings and 300 cattle. Also Kananiah, along with Shemaiah and Nathanael, his brothers, and Hashabiah, Jael, and Josabad, the leaders of the Levites, provided 5,000 Passover offerings and 500 head of cattle for the Levites. The service was arranged and the priests stood in their places with the Levites in their divisions as the king had ordered. The Passover lambs were slaughtered and the priests sprinkled the blood handed to them while the Levites skinned the animals. They set aside the burnt offerings to give them to the subdivisions of the families of the people to offer to the Lord, as is written in the book of Moses. They did the same with the cattle. They roasted the Passover animals over the fire as prescribed and boiled the holy offerings in pots, cauldrons, and pans and served them quickly to all the people. After this, they made preparations for themselves and for the priests because the priests, the descendants of Aaron, were sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fat portions until nightfall. So the Levites made preparations for themselves and for the Aaronic priests. The musicians, the descendants of Asaph, were in the places prescribed by David, Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun, the king's seer. The gatekeepers at each gate did not need to leave their posts because their fellow Levites made the preparations for them. So at that time, the entire service of the Lord was carried out for the celebration of the Passover and the offering of burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord as King Josiah had ordered. The Israelites who were present celebrated the Passover at that time and observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. The Passover had not been observed like this in Israel since the days of the prophet Samuel, and none of the kings of Israel had ever celebrated such a Passover as did Josiah with the priests, the Levites, and all Judah and Israel who were there with the people of Jerusalem. This Passover was celebrated in the 18th year of Josiah's reign. After all this, when Josiah had set the temple in order, Necho, king of Egypt, went up to fight at Carchemish on the Euphrates, and Josiah marched out to meet him in battle. But Necho sent messengers to him, saying, What quarrel is there between you and me, O king of Judah? It is not you I am attacking at this time, but the house with which I am at war. God has told me to hurry, so stop opposing God who is with me, or he will destroy you. Josiah, however, would not turn away from him, but disguised himself to engage him in battle. He would not listen to what Necho had said at God's command, but went to fight him on the plain of Megiddo. Archers shot King Josiah, and he told his officers, Take me away. I am badly wounded. So they took him out of his chariot, put him in the other chariot he had, and brought him to Jerusalem, where he died. He was buried in the tombs of his fathers, and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for him. Jeremiah composed laments for Josiah, and to this day all the men and women singers commemorate Josiah in the laments. These became a tradition in Israel and are written in the laments. The other events of Josiah's reign and his acts of devotion according to what is written in the law of the Lord, all the events from beginning to end are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah.